So, good morning guys, thank you for being here. It's great that so many people arri uh, arrived also on, on a Friday morning. And thanks to Franz who made all this possible. He did a major uh, share of our collaborative work here. And without him this wouldn't be possible and it's great work. So, what I would like to demonstrate uh, to you now is a new tool that I've been developing now for the last couple of weeks and months. So, it's rather simple. It's something very, it's something very trivial that actually I'm presenting here. It's something that we say, oh, why doesn't this tool actually exist? It should be implemented in SPM or something. So this talk is actually directed to the people who work with SPM and to get a little bit uh, frustrated by its user interface. So when you think of how you look at the results in SPM, it's always a mouse click nightmare. You have to press so many buttons just to get your SPMs nicely displayed. Um, there is no really good possibility to show some anatomical masks and uh, SPM results at the same time. At least not with the hot color map that you are used to and uh, then have a, a proper masking as well. Um, there's no possibility to like save your coordinates that you have been using. For example, you have uh, selected a very nice slice through your brain images and you want to show it to your supervisor or something, but then you click somewhere else and now you don't find it anymore. This is these things happen. And then at the same time, there is no possibility to easily look at the different intensities of the overlays that you're using. So whenever you click somewhere and uh, look for the uh, value that is stored in the Y uh, um, variable, you would see just uh, the intensity of the underlay. But you cannot tell what uh, the T value in this coordinate would be. So this is even more a problem when you try to do, uh, uh, when you try to create figures from your SPM visualizations. So it involves lots of manual work. Uh, you have, if you want to overlay masks and regular SPM results, you have to use an image processing software like Photoshop or Affinity Designer. Um, and uh, also, when you uh, want to make uh, the different overlays intensities visible, uh, it can be frustrating. So, in a nutshell, it's all very much uh, uh, manual work. This is especially true if you have several figures at the same time you're working on. If you think that you've got four contrasts that you actually would like to show, you have to do this whole process four times over and over again. So, and then it happens that some colleague tells you, oh, part of our uh, study population cannot be used. For example, we had a drug study. And uh, two of the people we thought were taking drugs are not taking drugs at all. They got something else, but it was not cocaine, for example. But some of the people who claim that they are drug-free actually take drugs. So the group results are somehow flawed. And you have to do it all over again, even though you already have your figures ready. So manual work over and over and again. And this is something that frustrates uh, a person like me. So what I came up with was... Um, uh, image viewer that uh, should create you something the, uh, that is really close to production ready figures. So this is Sweet View. Uh, it's a little bit similar to what FSL View can do and what SPM can do, but um, it's uh, a little bit extended and it's optimized for, uh, for a quick and easy figure generation. It's not something for a, uh, actual fMRI newbies. It's, it's for people who actually know a little bit the way around and know how to actually uh, export SPM results to SPM TMAPs. If you're fine with that but want to have a nice way of creating figures and viewing the results, then uh, Sweet View might be something that you could be interested in. So it consists of a controller window and a viewer window. <coughs> when we look at the controller window, we see that we got this pane on the top where you can uh, uh, select the view mode, then there's a section where you can uh, manipulate and add labels, so label text labels that you would just add to your figures at some <coughs> position, like anatomical labels for example, and then there is this table uh, consisting of different volumes where you start with an uh, anatomical underlay and then you can add all your uh, overlays and masks uh, while you work. And and there is still some room for improvement, of course. Um, this will, there will be some features there in the upcoming versions. So when we look at the uh, different view modes, we have a tri view. This is the typical SPM view. And the mosaic view, what you can do is you can uh, set your uh, coordinates using the sliders. You can uh, input the coordinates directly in millimeter or in voxel space. And 
you can also assign a tag or a label to that, and which allows you then to store the coordinates that you just have ended by pressing the add or remove button to just store this view so you can come back later to it. Um, at the same time, there's a few options for Mosaic where you can uh, switch the orientation, switch uh, what display units are displayed uh, on, your, on your Mosaic representation. And this is something where you can enter um, the slices that are displayed here. And this is not something where you uh, have a fancy GUI for it, you just can use the vector notation that you use in MATLAB. For example, if you want to have uh, images showing from 10 to 95, so from slice number 10 to 95, you just enter this as start and end, and then take uh, every tenth slice out of it. So this is very, if you're working with MATLAB, this is a very intuitive way how you can specify the slices here. Uh, the next section would be labels. You can add uh, the text, the position, which are in axis coordinates, so not in the, uh, uh, in the voxel space, but in the um, coordinates of your figure, uh, which means when you uh, uh, move the figure a little bit, when you move the slide, uh, the, or se uh, select different slices, the uh, labels wouldn't move, it's just relative to the figure window. Uh, you can specify different colors and arrows, and uh, you get independent labels for triple nine mosaic view. So now the most important thing, maybe uh, the, the way you uh, manage your images, you can add anatomy images, overlays and masks. You can um, use the add button, or you can directly add and change the path here. So you don't have to press uh, through several um, um, dialog windows just to select the file. If you know the path already, if you have it stored somewhere, you just paste it in there and press the enter key. Um, you can select, uh, select different thresholds for anatomy, overlays, which would be from and to, so you do a windowing of your images, and masks, where you can also specify from and to, but also important, some masks are, um, have discrete values, so one region would be encoded with one, the other one would be encoded with two, so you can also select just a, a single integer number to select just one part of the mask. Um, and finally, you can, uh, when you do this overlays, you can set the background colors. Uh, either you use a color map or a solid color. Solid color, of course, makes sense for masks. Uh, and you can also specify borders. So the main idea is that you have the encouragement to play around with your data. So something that works really fast and quickly, so you can play around a little bit, change the threshold and see how it changes. For example, you uh, would just want to know, okay, you get uh, FWE whole brain corrected data results and you would like to know, okay, if I now uh, uh, get rid of the threshold, if I lower it, how will it extend? Can I overlay those uh, different thresholds at the same time? Yes, I can. So that's, that's the idea. You have a very quick way of exploring your data in a very new way that you haven't seen it before. And this actually can help you to fix a few problems, for example, that you might have with your anatomical mask and you have really the possibility to zoom into what you're, uh, uh, what you're interested in. Um, you can uh, quickly switch between triplane and mosaic view. This is something that is quite tedious in SPM because you have to press so many buttons. You can store all your viewing options within a map file. It's a sweet dot map file, so it's uh, just a regular MATLAB structure where you can also work with the scripts on it. Um, and um, then you can export the figure that you created using the normal MATLAB export function, so PDF, PNG, JPEG, that all works. So all the text that is uh, presented here is a vector graphic, so you can easily manipulate it afterwards. So what we can look uh, at now is, uh, let's see how we can quickly reproduce what uh, I used here in this, in this recent publication. So on the amygdala here is mosaic view, in this detailed mosaic view. So let's just switch here. So this is how we usually start. We just open uh, a regular anatomy file. This is our underlay. We can freely move around here. You see how uh, the coordinates would change in the in the few uh, in the few options here. For example, if I now move uh, to medial prefrontal cortex over the frontal cortex, I can easily add this label here and 
so whenever I feel to come back here again, I just tweak the label and we jump back here. Um, I can also add this label at this position. See, I can also let the um, pointer direct in the op opposite direction, or I can remove it all together. And of course, I can also change the color of my label here. So let's look at a little bit more complicated project. So let's open a project file here. These are the axial slices that I've used. So there it is. So this is the location of the bad nucleus of the stratotermonalis. This is the location of the amygdala, so there's already um, tripanel uh, slices that I've uh, pre-selected. Here you see the different uh, overlays I've been using. For example, here this SPM Tmap that is all, uh, I exported from SPM. It's already cluster level corrected, so you would just create your statistical maps that you're interested in, save them from SPM, and then use them here. Um, then. For example, here we see that the threshold is set to 3.15. That's uh, that's uh, um, that's the uncorrected p-value of 0 uh, 0.001. I can easily uh, change the threshold then and set it to something like this. And you see that uh, how how the threshold will change. If you if you wonder yourself why the t values are so low in this in this figure, these are unsmoothed data of the uh, of the amygdala. So this is an, an unsmoothed uh, group result. So then here you see a, a variety of overlays with uh, differently colored masks. You can easily let's see, let's see the, the green one if you look at the green mask for the on the right amygdala, actually left amygdala, you can see how uh, you can easily <coughs> toggle them. So, this is just a short demonstration of what you can do. And if I just switch over to the mosaic view, I've already selected some options here. It's in the set direction, it's in millimeters. It's from 28 to 51, in, uh, that's in box of space. I can quickly also create those mosaic images. And if I say, OK, I need more slices, I need more detail, I would just add one here, and it would generate more slices. OK, and then maybe, uh, for example, if a reviewer says, yeah, you know, it would be nice, this actually happened, it would be nice to zoom in uh, directly at the amygdala to really see a different subnuclei, uh, and you want to have the zoomed version of it, you can easily have that. Let's just open this pro uh, project here, this coronal mosaic. And this can be done by just changing here uh, the, the range of the corners that you're displaying. So I'm just wanting uh, x values from 28 to 77, y values from 66 to 80, and, and z values from 23 to 55. And therefore, I have this nice windowing of, of, of my mosaics. So and a figure like this is very much working if you have to always assemble them again in Illustrator, if you cut the slices. and this tool actually should provide you a possibility to quickly do these things. So even though, uh, for example, when the new results are true, just can replace my uh, SPM overlays and then get the new results in here. So, okay, a little bit about the current status of, of, of this application. So this is now a stable version, it's version 0.2. Um, so if you're interested uh, in trying out uh, this version on your data, please contact me. I, I cannot really provide you a download link yet because it's all a little bit of work in, in progress. But I would really love to hear about your use cases, what you would like to do with it, 
uh, how you uh, how you um, find it uh, in terms of user experience. If there's something that is very unintuitive, maybe there's some form of collaboration that we can build up here. If you give me a little bit of feedback of what you actually want and how I can improve it, because at the moment it's just a quite uh, a complicated script that I use for my own and I would like to share it with you so we can talk about it later on. Next, so this is a little bit of the roadmap. The next uh, uh, version will focus on the user experience. I will uh, rewrite the uh, user interface a bit. Um, then uh, point six will be about masking, how you can easily use the software to create your uh, um, functional masks, for example. Um, I will also try to integrate Brain Atlas so that you always see where you're currently at. Um, point eight will be about time, so a feature I really love about uh, FSL view is that you have the time series uh, displayed as well when you use four-dimensional nifty files. Uh, the same uh, also applies to animations, it would be like nice to have uh, little movies of your, of your um, um, functional MRI data. Um, one will be uh, the major release, and after that, uh, I think I will also focus a little bit more on void analysis, so things that you would usually do with Rex or Maspa, then you can do it uh, easily from within, from within the software. So, about the uh, current version, so please contact me, I would love to share uh, this code with you. Uh, I would be happy to receive some bug reports and feature requests. And if you're interested in coding a little bit and helping with the development of, progress of this program, please contact me and get involved. Thank you much.